Welcome back to the Pancake World, everyone. This week, we are going to again examine the Southern Hemisphere on this pancake of a world. And today, we're looking at a claim made by Jaren. Jaren has long proclaimed that we don't know how fast planes actually go. Because on a flat map, as I showed you last week, the Southern Hemisphere is not the size that we all believe it is. If you haven't watched my video from last week, here's a link to it. I highly suggest that you watch that video first so you can fully grasp the distances we are talking about today. Our old friend Jaron has found an article that he believes proves his feelings of the Southern Hemisphere and how planes can actually get from Australia to South America. So let's see what Jaron has to say. What's going on everyone? It's Jaron from Jaronism back with a short video for you. A video where I will be showing you a recent article that allows me to feel, in a way, kind of vindicated. A while ago, when talking about planes traveling in the southern hemisphere, I stated that those passenger planes could be traveling faster than the speed of sound and actually be traveling much greater distances without anyone knowing. Well, this should be interesting, because as I showed you last week, the southern hemisphere is enormous compared to how the globe would portray it. So how do planes actually get across this giant, vast distance of the Southern Hemisphere on a flat Earth? Surely Jaron has evidence to back up his new beliefs. The jet stream is moving so fast right now that commercial planes are traveling faster than the speed of sound. If you're flying east today, you're in a whole lot of luck. The jet stream, that funny little channel of high altitude air that flows over the United States and Northern Atlantic, is moving at unheard of speeds, delivering commercial jets to their destinations nearly an hour ahead of schedule, the Washington Post reports. In fact, one Virgin Atlantic flight traveling from Los Angeles to London notched a speed of 801 miles per hour over Pennsylvania, which, had it been on the ground, would have been faster than the speed of sound. Well, maybe he's got something here, because if planes can actually travel that fast, maybe they could traverse the distances of the Southern Hemisphere required on a flat Earth. What else is there, Jaron? All right, here you see I've brought up Flight Radar 24, which is a site where you can track flights and I've just typed in Sydney to Santiago and if we zoom in here you can see what happens and the problem that we have with these flights is that as soon as they take off from Sydney uh, gets out over the open water and of course drops off and just skips to that next location and then it will fly over New Zealand there and again once it gets to a certain spot it just disappears from radar until it appears all the way on the other side over here by Santiago Chile. So again you can see that this plane got up to almost 680 I think I saw 684 miles per hour ground speed and then it disappears. So we have no idea how fast this plane could be possibly traveling once it gets up high enough to be in those jet streams and traveling across the Southern Ocean. And then you don't see it till it hits the other side. So we have no idea what's happening in this downtime where the satellites can't pick up, I guess, the, uh, the speeds of this plane. Damn it. He's got a point. I'm sure he's done the math and his math is right. And so this is just a little quick example that I made here. Uh, let's say we've got a plane going Sydney to Santiago, as we just showed. That travels 7,000 miles in 12 hours, which is about the average flight time. 7,000 divided by 12 equals 583 miles per hour. All right, but what about the jet stream? So remember, it's helping the plane with close to 250 mile per hour winds. So if the plane is being helped, well, 583 miles per hour minus 250, is the plane actually going 333 miles per hour? And then it's getting the extra 250 to end up at 583? Well, that doesn't sound very efficient, does it? So let's look at it this way. What if that plane was actually going 625 miles per hour, which we saw, ground speed. We also know that that's easily under the speed of sound. 625 miles per hour plus 250 miles per hour, which would be the most efficient thing, is 875 miles per hour ground speed. Okay, so a plane from Sydney to Santiago could be going 875 miles per hour for 12 hours. 875 times 12 is 10,500 miles instead of 7,000 miles. I mean, quite a difference, right? So Jaron is questioning the distance and speed of the airplanes as located off of New Zealand and off of the coast of Chile. So let's take that information and see what does it tell us with basic geometry. So here's our location off of New Zealand. A little bit off of the coast, kind of like Jaron showed. This is about the point where it dropped off of the GPS. And then we've also got our location off of Chile. Now, to figure out this in geometry, we need the distance between the North Pole and that spot 
off the coast of New Zealand. And when we measure that, we find that it is 14,846 kilometers from the North Pole. So that is our measurement number one. Now we have our location off of Chile. And you'll notice that it is a significant distance farther north on the map. We'll just say that rather than a globe. And the distance between that location and the North Pole is 8,798 kilometers. So we now have our distance two for our triangle. Now, on a globe, the distance between these two points is 8,800 kilometers. Now, I know Jaron used miles, but I'm trying to stay international here, so we're going to have to do a little conversion. This unaccounted for time, when the satellites don't see this plane, is just over 8,000 kilometers. So the next question we have to ask is how far apart are these locations? Because on the globe, like I said, that's just over 8,000 kilometers. But if you use flat Earth math, first we need to know how far apart they are in degrees. And based upon basic map making, these two locations are 102 degrees apart. Now when we create our triangle with sides of 14,846 by 8,798 with an inner angle of 102.7 degrees, the distance between these two points is not 8,080 kilometers. It's 18,396 kilometers. That's 10,000 kilometers more than Jaren was expecting. So how fast would a plane have to be traveling to traverse that distance in that time? Well, I'll be honest right now and let you know that when I did this math initially, I didn't think it was that big of a difference. Because when you traverse that distance in 12 hours, you only get a speed several hundred kilometers an hour faster than Jaren is claiming which is still more than any jet plane has ever claimed to travel. But what I'd forgotten is that it's a 12-hour flight from airport to airport. But we're not measuring airport to airport. We're measuring unaccounted for space over the ocean. And that time was only eight and a half hours. So in that eight and a half hours, this plane had to traverse 18,396 kilometers. And when I use Jaren's math, 18,396 divided by 8.5, how fast does our plane have to be traveling? It's not the 1,289 kilometers an hour converted that Jaren claims. It's 2,100 and 64 kilometers per hour. So Jaren, unless you can find a jet stream that has a speed of 700 kilometers more than you're thinking it does, your math doesn't add up, and the planes can't fly that fast over the distances it has to be on the flat Earth southern hemisphere. But I'm guessing you know this. And now you see why anyone who says southern flights prove the globe are either too scared to consider the alternative, or just haven't researched enough, 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 or just haven't researched enough. Or just haven't researched enough.